I've entitled uh, I've entitled the message "Getting In on the Act." Everybody wants to get in on the act. I uh, uh, <clears throat> trying to look at the dates here. Let's see. Acts eighteen is fifty four A.D. Acts nineteen is fifty. 58, 20, 25 years. Uh, if you were in the uh, automotive industry, we're talking uh, 40 years ago, how many years was it till retirement? What was, what's the standard union saying? Uh, let's see, when I started GE in 77, the other workers already had 30 and out. It's 30 and out. And then they wanted to get to work. I remember the Romans. My father-in-law's a UAW worker. Um, they wanted to get to 25 an hour. Yeah. They never got there. Because, I mean, how much can you rob them? Yeah. You can only rob them so much. And they finally bankrupt. And the, the late 70s, GE tried to go to 30 an hour because the auto workers had it. GE's answer was, we don't make cars. Well, you know, <laughs> say that again. I wasn't paying. In the late 70s, the GE unions tried to get the 30 and out, like the auto workers had. Oh. And GE's answer was, well, that's fine, but we don't make automobiles. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the rubber makers had, but I think the company starved them out. I think they yes. stockpiled them. There was, a, there was a few other unions that had it that your age and your time could equal the magic number. Uh, I know my brother said when he retires, uh, when he retires, he's going to, uh, it won't be long before he's forgotten, the company will forget him. No one will remember his name, but just move on. So that's probably how most men feel. You don't want to be forgotten. I was just looking at the dates here. 30 years ago, do you remember much about it? And, but you don't remember a lot about it. But you know you went through it. <laughs> and then 30 years before that, how much do you remember there? I usually try to go back in lumps of 40, 50, 40 years or 50 years. If you go back 50 years ago, I remember that 50 years ago. If you go back 50 years, you know, you, you say, well, it was pretty archaic. But it really wasn't all that archaic. It wasn't too much different than it is now. But if you go 50 years back before that, there were still some horses being, and buggies being pulled. It, it was in black and white, silent films, and there were still some, so it, you don't have to go back real far to have major changes. If you're a United Auto Workers and you retired, it wouldn't be long unless you were involved in the aftermath of them getting together and having a party and whatnot. And some guys did that and some didn't. I mean, you just forgot about it in time. You just forgot about it. Well, this is 30 years. This is 35 years. No, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. 25 years. Uh, it's 58 AD, Acts 19. The resurrection. Yeah. 25 years. Which we say, well, it doesn't seem like a long time, but it's long enough. It's long enough for a fad to end. We were just talking, you saw I had new license plates and, and we were going to do this Ohio thing. Mm -hmm. I said, Wait, when we were kids, my sisters are coming in in a week, or at least one of them is. We'd pull up that Ohio station and we were diligent. I can't remember if it was advertised, but we were diligent looking at those license plates. Oh yeah, that was, that we was advertised in our contest, yeah. And that's like, would you say 50 years ago? Yeah, yeah. it was in the 60s. 50 years 60s ago? 60s and 70s, yeah. yeah. You didn't look for that. They had radio advertisements. And, and everybody was in the loop. Yeah. Yeah. Now, not everybody's that. I, I don't consider myself in the loop today. I mean, it's not like you watch 3, 5, and 8, and everybody knows the same ads, the same shows, the same uh, contests that are going on. Who knows what's going on today? I mean, there's so many different loops out there. But everybody wants to get on the, in on the act. But now this is 25 years after the fact. And this is a fad that isn't going away. 
that this, this thing about Jesus Christ is not going away. And it's still fresh in people's minds, and things are still going on. Now, the, uh, the uh, thing with the uh, uh, miracles and all seems to be dying out. Now, when I came out early in, uh, in Christianity, there were those that, that wanted to pull me this way or that, you know, they all wanted to get my doctrine straight. Whatever the doctrine was, it was their doctrine, whatever it was. Here's Bank, did you ever hear anybody speak in tongues? Anybody here ever hear that? Uh, anybody here believe that? You better not say it out loud, Richie. Keep it whatever it is to yourself tonight. Tonight, tonight, Richie. Pardon? Say it again. Not in this day and age. Yeah, not in this. Well, yes. Two thousand years ago, yes. But in this day and age, uh, I, I don't hear about it too much. Like anybody hearing about it still? Speaking of tongues. Well, uh, I, I know. Uh, I, it'll go back to, to Ruckman. They were, remember there was holy laughter. Anybody remember holy laughter? You don't remember holy laughter? Well, there was, well, if you were, we were in this loop. Not the holy laughter loop, but the holy laughter of, you heard about it, there was a movement going on. Now that was going on in Brownsville. Anybody know where Browns, Brownsville is? A little town in No. <laughs> hey, every state's got a Brownsville. It's a place in Texas. You're, yeah. I think it's right on the coast. Brownsville, Texas, and well, anyway, they, the fundamentalists back back in that day, and age, they called it not not uh, Brownsville, but they called it Clownsville, Clownsville, because it was holy laughter. When you start laughing, you can't stop laughing. It was because of the Holy Spirit. Well, we would be hearing about all this stuff. Man, I don't hear about any of this stuff. But just like any other thing, people want to get in on the act. Now, what are some things that fundamentalists, uh, we're talking about a Bible-believing, King James-only fundamentalists, and, and other churches do, that we don't do? What is it that we don't do? We don't have a bus ministry. I'm not saying these things are evil. I'm not saying we shouldn't do them. Uh, you know, bus ministry is one of them. Junior church. Awanas, yeah, I was going to go to the Lizards. There's Awanas. Puppets. Puppets. You know, I still have all of that gear up here. Mm -hmm. All the puppet gear. Yeah. I have all of it. I never threw it out. And if I threw it out, somebody's going to eat. I don't know what I did with it. I think I still have them all to put it together for the puppets. That, that, never, that never launched. Mm -hmm. Snake kissing, yeah, well, it's not, it's snake handlers. I've heard of them, the country western singers, they joke about it. They make songs about snake handlers and all. You know, there's no door doorway here. Yeah. Or do they want one? Exactly. Yeah. Money well, back. where do you want one? <laughs> Money back. Yeah, well, it, you've heard the song. Yeah. Where do you want one? So uh, those are just three things. I can't think of anything else. But when, when they have something that's going, it seems like everybody wants to get on the act. Now, I, I'm not using that as the illustration, but our first point in verse 13, there's certain of the vagabond Jews. These are people that are, uh, I, now I did look up the word vagabond, and I, I was gonna write down these definitions. I, I, I guess I would, folks, I was just too tired. It's a person that wanders around. Uh, they, they are Jews. These people were Jewish. They were uh, they were probably off the reservation as far as the normal Jews were concerned. Like these vagabonds, who are these vagabond Jews? They're not saved, and they're not real orthodox. They're not orthodox like us other Jews. Not that we're Jews, but they're not like us. And they weren't Christian either. And they were off, we'll say, off the reservation. So they were uh, they were uh, going to attempt to be the competition. All right, so we have all C words here tonight. And so they're going to be the competition. And they want to get in on a good thing. It's kind of like if I go fishing and we're lining the pier and I catch a fish here. Folks, this is nothing new. They, they did it 50 years ago. They did it 100 years ago. It doesn't matter what day and age it is. If you catch a fish and I catch a fish right here. Boy, nice big rock bass. My father would catch a two-pounder. Rock bass are kind of small. You catch a big two-pounder. 
he'd catch it up at the harbor airport. Uh, and, and men go there on purpose because that is dredged out. They keep that out so they get the big liners in there at the airport. They catch a fish, then what happens? As soon as you catch a fish, everybody's pulls right in there. The competition shows up. They all want to get in on a good thing. So my dad would always pack up his gear. He'd move down 50 feet or 100 feet. Then cast his line in, and he'd say, you always count. You count because your lure's going down. you got to give it time to get down in it because it's deep there, real, real deep. Because it's purposely deep there to get the liners in. Goes, he counts, then he starts his lure, and he reels it up. And then what does he, what does he catch? No, he catches another rock bass. <laughs> then what does everybody do? Jump. Everybody comes in and throws their lines in. And so then he moves down again, and he keep moving around like that. But they all want to get on a, in on a good thing. Now, this is a good thing that was going on. This, this, this was a new thing. You and I probably, well, it, listen, Jesus only rose from the dead once, folks. Crucified once, died for our sins once, went to the grave once, rose from the dead once. Uh, you and I are never going to see that. But this good thing is still going on today. And they were 25 years out. And sometimes we say, well, that's a long time. We're trying to get a good feel for time. Is if you were a, uh, if you were a UAW worker and you retired 30 years ago, that's a, bit of that's a bit of time. And things change. Cell phones, there's no more flip phones. Maybe there's a flip phone. I mean, it, you don't, it's not Maxwell Smart with a phone in his shoe. <laughs> Right? Did Dick Tracy have a phone? Yeah, yeah wrist. He had the oh, he had the wristwatch. I never read Dick Tracy. Well, actually, at, at, at the end, he had a two-way wrist TV. Oh, two-way wrist TV. I, I, I would assume they have that today. They have a two-way television. It's called, yeah, it's called uh, Face Chat. Face Chat, all right. It's, so <laughs> it, it is moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so everything is different uh, today than it was 30 years ago. But this, they're trying to get in on this, this, this good thing. And, uh, and we see that fads come and go. You know, there's no more uh, Clownsville where they're having holy laughter. Uh, I don't need tongers. I mean, uh, I need a lot of people. It would seem as though I need a lot of people. But I haven't had anybody uh, lately trying to convince me to speak in tongues. No. Give me another one. Speaking in tongues. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they're always out. Give me another one. I can't think of another right now. Uh, I, I, I don't find people trying to te tell me different on the Bible unless they've just given up on me. There's a few churches they dance in the aisles. Oh, well, they dance in the aisles. Uh, you know, I, I've heard of that. And uh, we've had people that have been in churches like that. Uh, one guy, he said they were scared. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were dancing all around in there and they finally surrounded them saying, you're the sinner, you're the sinner, and, and just, they were visitors. <coughs> they were running around, I think it is, uh, oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. Oh, he's from West Virginia. Everybody here knows him. Angie's his sister. Heather and uh, Ron, I think it's Heather and Ron. It could have been another guy from Arkansas, but it could have been Heather and Ron. They happened to go to a Pentecostal church. It, it, well, let's say it wasn't Heather and Ron, but let's say it was. Heather and Ron or this other guy from Arkansas. They were visiting the church. And then they started running around the church. And, uh, not that. They were just sitting in the pew, minding their own business, running around. Pretty, the whole church was doing it. Then they all surrounded them and say, you're the sinner, you're the problem, you're the problem. And they, they, were, they, they were literally fearing for their life. These people, it could have been Heather and Ron. They couldn't wait to get out of there. But you find these kind of pockets every once in a while. But there is the competition. And uh, so one, uh, one thing um, I was taught at Cleveland Baptist is I am not ordained, but I am licensed by the church, their church, to preach. Anybody know why I'm licensed? There is a reason for it. They have a, uh, uh, it could tie you. <clears throat> there is a reason. I am licensed to do what? Oh. Say that again. 
Uh, I, that's the first thing that popped in my mind. I, I don't think so. No, not that. You can just send your 10 bucks in and anybody here can be a marriage uh, uh, officiator. It, but you no, know, that would be a knee jerk. You could go there, but that's not what I'm licensed to do. I'm licensed to do two things. Baptize. What are the two things that we do here? Baptize. No. And do communion. I'm licensed to do the order. To do the ordinances, to baptize and to perform communion. And uh, giving the authority from another church to venture out to do that. They said, otherwise, what you have is everybody's uncle is dunking people in their bathtubs and serving, uh, the way the preacher put it, everybody's, everybody's dunking in, the, in their bathtub at their house and passing out soda crackers. No. You know, I dismissed it, but there. Pro I can see the. I can see the uh, logic there, sure. because then you become a vagabond Jew. <laughs> see, and everybody, everybody's just setting up shop. Everybody is then setting up shop. So there is the competition. They see this stuff going on, and they want to get in, as our title says, getting in on getting in on a good thing or getting in on the act. All right, <clears throat> and certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them, uh, oh, the, uh, uh, not uh, certain of the vagabond Jews, there's competition, there's stuff that's going on before that. Oh, I know where I wanted to go. It's really verse 12. So that from his body were brought under the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases de departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So there's, they want to get in on this good thing. So they're, uh, Paul now is going to have this competition. Then at the, the taking of this hanky, I wouldn't do this, but you take this hanky and you lay it on a person and they're healed. Right? You know, it's like, uh, uh, what do those hucksters want you to do with a television? Where do you want, they want the, you to put their, your hand. Put your hand on the television and you'll be, and how they say healed. Healed. <laughs> You'll be healed. Yeah, you'll be healed. And, and so I don't, I don't watch that stuff on the television. Is that stuff still on? Oh, Curtis, yeah. Oh, oh, they're still on the TV. So, and plus, there's a big range of He's stations on, today. It's He's just on after, twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week on fifty-five dot two. Oh, 55, okay. <laughs> so you're, oh, you're watching my watching this service. Yeah. The competition. But the character of these people, our second point, is that they're vagabond. The character of them is they're not doing it under the authority of anybody. They're just kind of freelancing. So they're, they're, there is a certain character that does this stuff, the character of these people. And they, and, and they took upon them, they take it upon themselves to call over them which had evil spirits. So they took upon themselves to call. They are as bold as brass. So the third C word, we, C word that we want is they're very confident in what they're doing. They probably have seen this done before and they confidently go out there. They're probably in a, a back, if you go to Matthew, there were people that were performing miracles like this like a Simeon and, and uh, others that had performed some of these uh, strange, weird things. And so they had, they had the utmost of confidence. So they went out there confidently doing this. But whatever it was, the, the confidence that they had. And they commanded <clears throat> in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure thee, uh, adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Adjure you. The, uh, adjure, I, I looked up what does that word mean, and I didn't write down the definition. But it's, it's very commanding. It's, it is a, a direct command. Like I commanded Starla not to do what tonight? Sleep. <laughs> no, not to drink in the auditorium. No food or drink in the auditorium. Not, not to be drinking uh, in, in the auditorium. You know, I, I didn't... That, that's the only command I gave. I'll use that as a little series. But they, they, were, they were very confident in this command. And so the command was very, uh, uh, give, the, the word adjure, I, I forget what, the, what it means, but it, it's, it's a command that's very uh, authoritative. Authoritative command. 
And says the, uh, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. <coughs> now, this happened to be a family affair. It says seven sons. Aside from that, it means the company that they, they travel with. Uh, let's say you traveled with that kind of company. Let's say you did. Well, if, if you knew the truth, you would, you would catch on. And then after you caught on, what would you do? You would break fellowship with that. You, you, you kind of hooked up with them for a week or two. It could have been a year or two. You'd say, you know what? I, I think, you know, I think I hear my mother calling. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you know, and you're out of there. And but the company that they keep are of the same stripe, the same color, the same uh, doctrine, the same uh, the birds of a feather what flock together. Flock together. Right? They're the same kind of person, the company that they keep. The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, verse 15, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Who are ye? Uh, by the way, where does this evil spirit, where does he, he resides inside of this, this guy. And where's the evil spirit, where's the evil spirit going to wind up eventually? On top of the other guy. On top of the other guy. The evil spirit is going to, in the end, going to wind up in uh, everlasting chains and to hell, where he's going to go. But he pays them a compliment. Who gets the compliment? Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Who are you? But who are you? They pay a compliment. So what I want you to weigh in your heart right now, tonight, is what kind of a compliment would help pay you? We, we have to weigh that. If, hell, if hell's got you on the blacklist, would you count that as a compliment? Oh, yeah. That's a compliment. If hell's got you on the hit list or the blacklist, that's a compliment. And, they're, and, they, and, and you have a target, right? And every devil in hell is aiming for you. And they know your name. They know the name of Jesus. They know the name of Paul. And hopefully they know your name too. So they, they do. And, and de devils can pay a compliment. A compliment. A compliment that is given. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. <clears throat> so the uh, evil spirit never came out of them. They were not successful. So what it, what it produced was contention amongst themselves. You know, a house divided against itself shall what? Shall not stand. It, it's going to fall. So the devil's house, you know, Jesus gives that illustration. The devil's house really is, is fighting against itself. We have been, I, I should say we have been in situations like that. Man, I, we've been in, in uh, or heard a situation where uh, Christians went out on their own, did their own thing, I, and I know you're tired, which is, it's okay. It's all right. We've got a, uh, we've got a big week coming up. And my mother left and so our vacation really started just about an hour ago. And uh, so my mom's going to have her own little vacation from us while we have our vacation. But uh, what was my next point here? I know I got off the track here. Uh, oh, the, the uh, contention. And so there, there was much contention. So, Mrs. Tucker, let's make sure we don't have any contention on this. this uh, you know, we got enough fighting going on, we're all fighting amongst ourselves, right? Right? Do Christians fight amongst themselves? They do, folks. Sure. They do. Now, if we, we've never had it here, fighting amongst ourselves here, but man, we've heard of people, uh, dear, dear friends of ours, they go off, they start the thing in the house, and one of my closest friends, Said to me, all he kept. He said to me, "A brother, it was bad. It was. I don't know how long it lasted. Maybe a year or so. But it certainly wasn't this kind of situation. But it, it, he said it, it lasted about a year. 
And the contention, I believe the contention was over little children. Uh, I know we learned in the uh, Institute, uh, I think it was uh, the pastor over here at uh, Bedford Baptist uh, said, said uh, GPS, he said, uh, fellas, what is going to make it or break it? What, what makes it or break it in your church? The what? Nope, I need to go there. But yeah, that would be true. That's what I want to put on. Now there's a certain room in here. Oh, there's. Yes, ma'am. He said the nursery is going to make it or break it. Meaning the women are going to fight amongst themselves over these babies for whatever reason. Whatever reason. Now that would be one area of contention. But uh, if I remember right, this fellow said, Brother, you could have you could have sliced the air in that place. He said it was so bad. Now both sides of, of the story told me the same thing. If there was a gun in that room, they would have killed each other. That's how bad it was. Can Christians do those things? Yes. And it's like, yeah, they can do those things. He told me if there was a gun in there, they would have killed each other. Killed each other. Why it's best to not have it in the house, but have it here. See? So we don't run into those kind of problems. But the, the contention that people can have. Hey, listen, when the devil's fighting amongst themselves, let them have at it. You know? right? Just get out of the way. A lot of times you don't even have to intervene to, to let it go. Let it go at the contention. But what did this bring about? What did it bring about when all around had heard how these devils fought amongst themselves? And this was known to the Jews and Greeks, the Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. It brought about conviction. When all of this was, all, when all was said and done, and finally over, it brought about conviction to the entire area. It, the people were under some kind of uh, deep conviction about what was going on, that the name of Jesus was magnified. So it brought about a, con a, a conviction of the people. And as a result, when, when people get convicted, our next C word, they end up getting, not all of them did, but they end up getting what? Converted. Yeah, you see if you come up with the outline yourself. And many that believed came. Many believed came. They became converted. They became saved individuals. And when a person gets converted, truly converted, it brings about, uh, you know, uh, that if thou shalt, what, what's the next word? If, that, if thou shalt, what? You know, if thou shalt confess, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, and thou uh, oh my God. I, I can't even quote it myself. I knew that, hey, you know, there will come a time when the preacher will forget. It means I'm getting, going to be getting older. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath risen from the thou shalt be saved. But with the mouth, confession is made unto for with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation with a for, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I don't know if I have it backwards. But it brings about confession. It says they came and confessed. They confess the name, uh, now in this case for salvation, they confess in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what else do they confess? In this story, what did they confess? Yeah, they confess their sins. All right? What are the two main sins for most people? You know, what, what fundamental independent Baptists don't want you to do, other than cuss. Text while driving. Say that again? Texting. Oh, well, that's a new sin. Texting. Name an old one. Papa, top again. Huh? Smoking and drinking. 
Frank and his mom, pop a tap again. I have just time for one more now. Yeah. Well, it's out there. That goes back to 1963. The Budweiser and the Camels. The Budweiser and the Camels. Does sin go a whole lot deeper than that, folks? Yes, it does. Sure. Because right, for a lot of people, they never had the Budweiser or the Camels. They don't have the Budweiser and they don't have the camels. They were converted and they confessed. And many of them that believe came and confessed and showed their deeds, which is their conduct. They confessed their conduct of the things that they were doing. Meaning they were going to stop it. Whatever it was. All right, so true Christianity and true conversion, yeah, that could have been, a, I don't even know if that was a point. True conversion <laughs> brings a whole lot more than giving up Budweiser and you're chewing tobacco. You know, where you got a little bit between your gill and your teeth. The confession and the conduct that they had, that they were doing. <clears throat> Um, rock and roll. How much money is spent on that? Um, probably nine thousand two dollars three on there. <laughs> all right. How much have you? All right. Do you want me, do you want me to ask you how much have you spent on it? I know. Let, let, let give me a more accurate number. Thousands is two thousand. Ten thousand is. I spent multiple thousands. You, you, over ten thousand. Uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Do you think it went over ten grand? No. Okay. Could it have gone over eight? About five grand. Okay. Well, let's say it's five thousand dollars. That's a lot of dough, folks. That, that's a lot of money. You stashed five thousand dollars away fifty years ago. You could be a fairly well-off character. Right? <laughs> that that could build up. So our next point, verse 19, many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together. Anybody know of a man that died? I saw him in a movie. It was a kind of a comedy. It had the, uh, it had the, the gangster, not James Cagney. Robinson? Not, not, not Edward G. Robinson, the other guy. Bogart? Humphrey Bogart. And I, said, and I looked and I said, uh, oh, and the guy that plays, uh, uh, not no time for sergeants, uh, I can't think of his name, but he would play that GI part. Cool. I can't think of his name right now, but he was in it. But who was the comedian that uh, had uh, not a really big, big show? That's a Sunday night, Saturday night, Jackie, they had Jackie Gleason in it. And I scrolled down and did listen to Jackie Gleason. He died. Anybody know how much, how many titles? I've heard it on Paul Harvey. I, I've given the illustration in here before. Titles on New Age. He would bring in, near the end there of his show, he'd bring the day, uh, said, the days of Aquarius. The day, who sings that? The, the fifth dimension. He'd bring that fifth dimension on there. I mean, the, these people are, uh, are uh, the mind. That fifth dimension. The, the age of Aquarius, he had over 20,000 titles on New Age that he had acquired. 20,000 books, titles on New Age when he died. Gleason? Jackie Gleason. Wow. Well, to me, it says that he died and went to hell. Mm -hmm. That's what it shows to me. But what did they bring? Curious arts. A dream. The, the dream ring. The dream ring. Curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So our next thing, if there's going to be our next C word, it only has the four letters in it. 
Yes, sir, you got it. When you get saved, there is a cost to this. There is a cost. It's going to cost you something that you're going to end up giving up. Now, we would be given uh, booze. Uh, Christmas time, a booze would be given to us, and uh, you got this beautiful booze bottle. And it's filled with whiskey, and then we had, who knows, I, I don't know, it was all kinds of liquor. And we had it stored away, I had gotten saved, and I thought, well, you know, we never opened it. it does it ever go bad? No, it actually gets better. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> it only gets better? It doesn't go bad. I thought, well, man, you can't let this go to waste. So the temptation was to do what with it? Give it. Give it. So why would I give that sin to somebody else and let them get cropped? Better off the brain freezing your radiator. There you go. Oh yeah. Hey, and you know what they they would do? Is you uh, those model T's? My father would tell me they'd open up that pet pot. They'd be under their drinking stuff. Those that are really hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be draining it right out of the radiator. Yeah, those are hardcore drums. This was back in 1918. But they would do that. All right, so where did we dump it? Down the sink, and where did it go? Feeding the fishes. <laughs> Into our sewage. Which sewage is that? Into the septic tank. Right down in that brand new septic tank. It was steel, steel lined, you know, and concrete reinforced. It went right in there. It went right down in there. Why would you give that junk to somebody else? All those other titles, it, it, it belongs in the dumpster. In the dumpster. The cost. And then what is our last point? The conclusion. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Listen, no matter where you go in the Bible, it's always like this. It doesn't matter which comes first. Something bad happens. Right after there's revival, something good happens. As soon as something good happens, expect the next chapter, something bad is going to happen. It, it's like that. Good and bad, good and bad. Folks, Christianity is not all bad and roses. So this was the conclusion. So widely grew the word of God. But the next event is probably going to be something bad coming. It, it, it goes that way, good and bad, good and bad. We get our victories. Amen? So the conclusion is verse 20, where the paragraph marking is in 21. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So there are people that want to get in on the act. But if you don't get in on the act the right way, it isn't going to be good, right? Right? At least for the vagabond Jews. But for those that were, they heard the word of God and they got saved, it was a good thing. Shake hands.